is uh, around 79 years. He was telling me that during their time, hockey was played everywhere in their schools. Colleges, uh, all level, all the levels you can think of. Hockey was played. Yes, about uh, we having a, a very clean environment. So, in in, in one of our, our uh, places that we went, we went to Accra Thermal Station. So, someone said that, okay, why don't we all meet at the hockey stadium? I said, hockey stadium, what's that? So I was I was actually taken to the stadium. Whilst waiting for for the the others to come in, they were playing the game. And I said, Oh, this is a nice game. This is a beautiful game. That was in February. So in May, I went there myself to make inquiries as to how I can join. And that has been my journey to hockey. I decided that I'm going to create a company that will promote the game. So that's how come we have Ball and Stick today. So Ball and Stick just came as a result of an invitation to the hockey stadium and today we have Ball and Stick. We are promoting hockey everywhere possible. And we, we, we feel that it is best we begin with schools. That is why we are in schools and that's why we've invited you all to be here. It is not a difficult game. Neither is it uh, risky as others see it to be. Yes, we, we use uh, equipment. Uh, and so people see it as to be a very risky game, but it is not. Umpires in, in, in hockey, uh, in football, we call them referees. But in hockey, we call them umpires. They are trained in a way to sense danger far, far off. So the, the moment someone r raises a stick, the umpire is able to whistle. So it is not risky like we, we, we think or we see it being played. This year, we chose this theme, Growth is, it Begins With You. We believe that everything that you can achieve in this world begins with you. Nobody will, will achieve anything on your behalf. If you are sick, you, you drink medicine by yourself to, to be healed. Everything you want to achieve in this world, it begins with you. Most parents say that go to school and focus on your education, education, education. Don't do any other thing. But we want to assure you that you can play hockey and still become whoever you want to become. We, we, we have evidence of what I'm saying. Mr. Frank is here, who is our uh, speaker. He will share his journey with you. You understand that at his level, he's with the Olympics panel of FIH and a banker. He still play, plays hockey. So if, if, uh, don't be misled that, oh, focus on your edu education alone. Don't do any other thing than that you fail. No. We have a, a living proof that you can play hockey for as, as exercise or to uh, for your country and, and go to all the levels you, you can think of and still achieve your career goals. Today in hockey, we have lawyers who are hockey players. We have doctors. So it, it actually begins with you. If you want to follow hockey alone and, and not study, you will fail. It is you. 
So, we, we are here to encourage you that hockey is, is not like the other sports. I, I, don't, I don't want to mention them. Yes, I don't want to mention them. Uh, we are live, so I don't want to mention them. Maybe someone may, may, may take me on. It's not like the other sport that you, you have to be that. No, hockey is not like that. Hockey, you can still play hockey and still become whoever you want to become. Fortunately for us, the uh, president of Ghana Hockey is, a, is the CEO of uh, Ghana Gas. Look at, look at his, his level. He still comes to the, the stadium and plays hockey. So, it is you. It is you. Don't be uh, discouraged that, no, I have to study, I have to learn, 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 learn. No, we are here to encourage you. We are looking at, um, at going beyond the talk 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 today we are just going to motivate you we are looking at in in november all schools invited here uh we are going to put you into a game tournament and then the 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 winning schools we have an arrangement that i will not talk here uh there are a few others that I have already mentioned to you, but we, we have a, an arrangement that you are going to play the hockey somewhere. So the, the winning schools, today we are just motivating you. We are, we are just telling you that it is possible to achieve whatever you want to achieve. Uh, and, and hockey will not derail you from your career goals. Just stay focused. It is you. Whatever you want to achieve, it is you. With time, we'll, we'll communicate details as to the event coming uh, up in, in November. We'll, we'll, we'll be in your schools and then the schools that do not have equipment, we fortunately for us, we uh, Harrow Sports is our partners. Already with giving a, a, a sticks and balls to uh, schools. There are some here. Uh, I know of uh, Presec, Legon Presec, uh, also Presec. We, we, we've given you equipment. And we are going to continue to, to do more. We know one thing that is, is discouraging people into hockey is the equipment. Equipment are very, very expensive. Uh, if you want to play football, you just need one ball. Some even play football with that boot. But in hockey, you need a stick. Everyone needs a stick. And the sticks are very, very, very expensive. And we know that that is one of the, of, of the limitations. But we want to assure you that per... Uh, the help we are getting from elsewhere. Fortunately for us, this is in partnership with Field Hockey Canada. Field Hockey Canada is, is, in, is so much pushing us to promote hockey. And that is why we are fortunate to have the uh, ambassador here to assure us that Field Hockey Canada and, and the whole of Canada is with us. And they are monitoring and, and following up this summit. As we speak, it's, it's being streamed live. We have uh, people in Canada who are watching us. And uh, our uh, speakers, we have three of them who will be joining us by Zoom. Who will speak and, and let us know the benefits they have derived from hockey. So once again, I want to thank you all for coming. We want to say uh, that let's not help hockey to die because already hockey is dying. 
So our effort will help this game not to die. And we would be able to achieve the FIH goal, which is to growing following. And FIH vision is that we'll have a lot of people coming into the game to play. And with time, we have a program that we are going to launch where we are introducing hockey in the homes, orphanage homes. I've, I've already been to Osu, Osu uh, uh, Children's Home. We are having discussions with them. So we are introducing hockey everywhere, anywhere. And we are including everybody, whoever matters. We are including everybody. So hockey will grow. Once again, I want to say a very big thank you. And God bless you and enjoy the summit. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm told that about 10 people are going to be lucky here to go home with a ball and a stick. So you don't want to miss it. Any moment. Come on, did you have breakfast before coming? Hockey Youth Empowerment Summit 2022. Yes, that's the vibe. That's the vibe. So I would like to acknowledge some schools represented here. Do we have St. Mary's here? Kindly give us a wave. Wow, wow. Beautifully seated. Wow. Oh, give them a round of applause. Wow. Do we have Legacy Girls here now? Okay, so they are beautifully seated at the back there. All right, all right. Thank you so much for coming. Without you, we cannot begin the growth process. So, as Mr. Lumo said, the growth process begins with you. We are growing hockey everywhere in Ghana. How many of us have played hockey before? Put your hands. Wow, quite a large number of people. So I, I had the opportunity to speak to some who were strikers. And I asked, how do you score the goal? And they were like, they just, they, just, they just swamped the ball. So we would have a 3D display. We have Mr. Lamte in our midst. Let's acknowledge him with a, clap, a hand of applause. Not now. In due time, he will be here to display his 3D hockey stick and ball. So moving on, I would like to... I'd like us to listen and watch a documentary about hockey, how hockey started in Ghana, a brief history about hockey in a short documentary. So shall we invite the technical team with a round of applause as they show us a documentary of the history of hockey. Put your hands together for them one more time. Hockey is a, is a game that if you don't train and don't train regularly, don't improve it. I have a lot of people who can invent anyone. I need to see some help. They forward to play good hockey, to train. And we are driving great. There are so many benefits, like employment, you know people at higher places. So there are so many things that they will get if we continue. If we will get themselves in the hockey. No, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. After school, I'm not working with the public health. I've not received uh, salary, but good will and analysis have no statistics sustained up to me. Is there interest in the graph? So, I encourage the youth to get them involved. And I plead that I have small sponsors and supporters. My children, the men, they also play okay at school. So I encourage the youth to get them involved. Thank you. 
if anything, you need to look up. Okay, okay, a round of applause. So I had an opportunity to speak to Mr. Louis Tengi. He is the sports stadium manager of the Ghana Hockey Association. So I happened to have a conversation with him and he he seems to speak with so much passion about hockey in Ghana. And uh, you can see from his conversations that hockey is an interesting game. So, highest 2022. Yes, growth, it begins with you. If hockey is going to rise in Ghana, it begins with you, it begins with me. I want to acknowledge our prior sponsors of this summit. Lesego, if you are here, kindly give us a wave. Lesego, wow, they are, they've mounted at, at the back there. So, they are a financial institution and they, they have 26 branches all over Ghana. And this year, we're fortunate to have been sponsored by them. And they can assist you in loans, corporate projects, anything that has to do with finance. They can assist you. You can see them right behind, and they will assist you. Okay, so Hockey Youth Empowerment Summit 2022. Hockey Youth Empowerment Summit 2022. Yes, growth, it begins with you. So, moving on, I would like to introduce our guest speaker for the summit. You know, it almost feels like a dream come true to introduce our guest speaker. Our guest speaker this morning is lead a dynamic team of Ghanaian and Canadian staff delivering programs in development, cooperation, political and public affairs, trade, defense, security, consular affairs, and administration. She is the High Commissioner of Canada to Ghana. And this morning, in the next 25 to 30 minutes, we will be listening to a heartwarming speech from the High Commissioner of Canada to Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, with a standing ovation. Yes, with a standing ovation. Help me welcome with love and joy in our hearts. Help me welcome to the podium, Her Excellency Kati Chaba. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? Good morning, everyone. Thank you to Field Hockey Canada and to Bala and Stick and especially to Kojo Lumur for inviting me to speak at today's Hockey Youth Empowerment Summit. I will just say though that I am not planning to speak for 25 minutes, so don't worry, I will keep it much shorter than that. I'm honored to share the virtual podium with Nora Goddard Despot, Pan American Cup 2021 gold medalist and assistant captain of Canada's junior women's team as well as celebrated Canadian coaches, Sophia Walia and Bernadette Boyer. I'm also thrilled to meet Ghanaian field hockey enthusiasts like Kasal Soa and Frank Oti Mensa, who have made field hockey a part of their lives. For Canada, hockey is more than a national pastime. It's a part of Canadian culture and identity and has been for more than a hundred years. On bright Saturday mornings like this one, many young Canadians across the country pick up a stick and a puck or a ball to start a game on the driveway, in the schoolyard, or at the ice rink. And I have to tell you that in the wintertime in Canada, when it is very cold, many people will actually make ice rinks in their yard or out on the, in, in the park in front of their house just so that they can play more hockey. Despite the many other activities that capture children's attention, whether those are football or basketball or Netflix or watching social media on their smartphones, 
our passion for hockey remains intact. I would love to see that passion flourish in Ghana alongside our beloved football because hockey in all its forms has so much to offer. Hockey builds speed, coordination, stamina, and general athleticism. Surveying the field, finding an opening, and calculating angles all strengthen your mental acuity. Win or lose, it promotes camaraderie, friendship, and the ability to put your team's goals above your own. And I also completely agree with the point that was already made this morning that you can get an education and also play a sport. And actually, playing a sport while you are getting your education will help you to do better in school. More than that, hockey can educate and empower, especially if it's inclusive. Canada's national record has proven that both men and women, girls and boys, can excel in this sport. You can begin at any age. You can play recreationally while you pursue your career goals, as some of today's speakers have shown. It offers a world of opportunity, and I hope young people in Ghana will agree. To the organizers, I applaud your effort to raise the profile of field hockey in Ghana, and I hope to see you succeed. And to all of you young people in the audience, I wish you all the best as you play hockey, and I know that you will be very successful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Her Excellency. Oh, do it better for her. Do it better for her. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for this heartwarming speech. So, yes, I indeed promised you that 10 of us, or even more, will be lucky to take home balls and sticks. So, I'll be inviting a fine woman to help me do that. So, before I do that, I want to acknowledge our online guest speakers, um, Sophia Welia, um, Nora Goddard, Goddard Desport, and Bernadette Boyer. Yes, we duly acknowledge your presence and your participation in Hockey Youth Empowerment Summit 2022. Hockey Youth Empowerment Summit 2022. Hockey Youth Empowerment Summit. Thank you very much. So, moving on, I would like to invite the Councillor of the Canada Embassy to do as the honor of the Haro Lucky Draw, our proud sponsors for this year. I would like to invite Anika Alman with a round of applause, with a round of applause, to do that for us. With a round of applause. Thank you very much. Okay, I would invite Mr. Lumo to join me as well. Let's give him a round of applause. Yes. So, uh, our first uh, lucky winner. So, this was a, a, a raffle that we did. That uh, we had a system to pick uh, student, ten students, and then we are going to give them uh, a brand new hockey stick and then a ball. Wow! Wow! So uh, I'll mention the name, and then the person will come forward. Um, the first lucky winner is Gloria Tete. Gloria Tete, can you join me? Infantiman, Teta. Infantiman from Infantiman. Oh, Infantiman Senior High School, Gloria Tete. Wow. Let's, let's give it up for her. She is taking home a brand new Harrow hockey stick. 
and a ball. Wow. Gloria Tete. You are really going to strike with this stick and ball. Let's give it up for her. Let's give it up for her. Finally, I see your face. Oh, oh my day. I've been out here thinking about you for days. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I just want to say, uh, my head is over. My head, I know fit to reset. I know fit to connect. We can be together. So I just get if I want it. Princess if you fell in your belly fatty, you go to breakfast. I'm not catchy. Can you see the pull? I'm not catchy. I'm not faking this, no fugazi. You see these feelings? I'm not catchy. I'm a quest and fit. I just want it. I'm 
Hi guys, it's um awesome to be here. Super happy to get to talk. 
Uh, thank you to Kujo from Ball and Stick for letting me speak, and thank you to Phil Hockey Canada for giving me the opportunity to talk to every one of you. I hope you all are having a good day. Um, so I was asked to come here and to talk a little bit about my hockey journey, um, just in terms of my pathway of playing internationally at junior level. So I started playing hockey when I was around six years old, so quite young. It was introduced to me through a family friend, and I started playing for my club, West Van Field Hockey. Um, and I sort of continued playing um, up until now, yeah. Uh, hockey was never really the sport I wanted to play um, in the beginning. In the beginning, football was what I was focused on. I loved football, and that was my passion and what I really enjoyed when I was young. But... As I started to get older, I started to really appreciate how fast hockey is and a lot of the friendships that I made through hockey. And so when I turned around 15 or 16 years old, I started to really enjoy it. And I realized that that's what I wanted to pursue more competitively. So when I was 16 years old, I made my first provincial team. Uh, it wasn't a top provincial team, but I really, really enjoyed it. It was a good experience. And I continued on through that pathway there. I didn't, I was first recognized to play on a, sorry guys, there's a little bit of feedback right now. I can't really hear. <laughs> Hopefully it's a little bit better now. Um, but basically, I started to play for, uh, I started to get rec- was recognized and nominated for the Canadian Jersey team when I was 17 years old. And this had come after a period of time when in hockey, I was never really the first person to for teams or to the top teams. But I really wanted to do this at an international level, so I kept working hard. And I picked this as a junior team when I was 17 years old. And from, and from there, I was able to, and I have been able to compete in a few international tournaments and competitions. I have been able to go down to US to play the tournament, and I also go there for school now, as well as playing hockey. So when we were talking about the beginning of the summit, understanding my education and also getting hockey, uh, I have been able to do that, and I'm still doing that. I am getting my degree in biology and psychology right now. And I've also been able to travel a lot with hockey. So through Field Hockey Canada and the tournaments I've been able to go to, I've been able to travel to China, Chile, um, Vivas, as I mentioned, and Belgium. So I've been able to play in international tournaments. And it's been a really incredible experience to meet other people as well in international hockey as well as be able to play at that level because it's different. Hockey is an amazing sport in all forms, but it's really, really, it's a privilege and it's really cool to be able to play at that international level and not only be able to experience it, but be able to touch and feel that kind of high level intensity. More recently in my international journey, uh, last year, around this time actually, I was selected for the Junior Pan Am team. And this was one of the bigger highlights I'd say so far in my hockey career. So I'll go into a bit more detail about that. So basically, we, uh, we were selected, I was selected for this Junior Pan Am team. And we went in as the underdogs. There was articles that were being written about the Pan Am tournament, and it was talking about Argentina winning the tournament, and Chile being, uh, you know, like, mostly in the second place in the U.S. as well. So our motivation going in to this tournament was to play as a unit, to play together, and to compete with the other teams. So we w- entered right before the tournament of the three a month, three months, three months, three months, three months, just trained together as much as possible. And I was really privileged to have Patrick Tristani as a coach and Jeff Lillian, who were super helpful in getting us prepared for this tournament. Uh, we came down to Chile, and it was 
a different environment. It felt excited and different. And I think everyone on the team knew eventually that we were checked in and we were ready to show the world what we could do. The first game, I remember feeling so nervous and so shoulder was tight. I was so anxious, but we stuck to our game plan and we really focused on the fact that we all believed in each other and that we knew that we could do this. And from there, the tournament just got really fun and exciting and it got better and better. So through that process, we got tournament, we qualified for, the, not only did we qualify for the World Cup, but we also won the tournament for the first time in Canadian history, which was Amazing, incredible. Uh, my heart was so full for like, weeks after that. I couldn't quite believe what had happened, how we'd gotten here. It was an amazing experience and an amazing feeling. And to talk, not only that, but the fact that we were going to the World Cup for the first time, and I think it was about eight years, was super, super exciting and a super rewarding feeling. Um, after that, we Pan Ams was in August. I went back to school, and we sort of entered kind of a waiting period where we were going to figure out whether or not we were selected for the World Cup team. I was fortunate enough to be selected again for that team, um, which was it's a privilege. It's always a privilege to represent your country, but at a World Cup level, it was pretty amazing. Uh, we the World Cup was in South Africa, as some of you know. And it was originally scheduled to be played in December of 2021. So we went down in November. And unfortunately, with COVID and the Omicron virus, there very actually we were in a holding. We were being held in South Africa. We were able to get, people couldn't get home. The tournament was been canceled. So it was super disappointing to get there. The train's so hard to get there. And then have the tournament be canceled. And be able to get home. People in South Africa were so kind and were really helpful, but it was a difficult process. And I think one thing that came out from that is that we as a group, that team that went down, really bonded and really connected. And then after the girls who came up and we decided that we wanted to perform uh, well for the tournament was rescheduled. So the tournament was rescheduled for this April, the World Cup, and we had some changes within the squad. There were some people that couldn't attend, but we did go down. I did go down, and I was fortunate enough to play with my sister, and I was the assistant captain for the team. And I have never experienced or experienced attendance on hockey before when we went to the World Cup. It was cool to see all the cameras there and all these ads and people around the pitch. It was just an incredible experience. Um, the hockey was obviously amazing. It was cool to be able to play at that level. Also very, very tiring on the body. But it was just an amazing experience. We didn't do as well as we wanted to do. We came 15th in the tournament, which still was impressive. 15th in the world isn't that bad. But just being able to go down there after having had a setback with COVID and stuff like that and being able to represent your country was a fantastic experience, one that I will never forget. I think if I can give you five, like through my hockey journey and my experience and give you guys any advice, it would be to just cherish the moment you have on the field with your teammates in hockey. It is an incredible sport. It's a sport that has taken me around the world and which I'm very thankful for. It is a sport that has given me friends or given me relationships with people. And it has helped my education. I owe a lot of where I am in my life and how I'm going to hockey and to the people that have helped me, my coaches and my team. And I wish, looking back, that I had more people in certain moments and just taking the time to say, wow, this is a really cool experience. It was really perfectly easy here. Hockey is a fun sport. It's my favorite game to play. It is... It's just one of the best things that I've ever had to experience. I've been privileged to do so. And I, 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 I,
want to sort of convey the message that you can go many places with autism. I have been fortunate enough to go many places with autism. So, yeah, I guess the last couple of words would be just continue to play, continue to learn, always have that mindset, keep learning, keep growing, and don't let setbacks push you back. You know, keep going, keep working, and I hope you guys really enjoy watching. It was lovely talking to you guys. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Nora. That's an amazing experience. So keep going. No matter what age you are, you can still play hockey. So I want someone to remind me of my favorite subject way back in JHS. There was one phrase I was, was interested in in JHS. Can anyone help for a ball and a stick. My interesting subject. It was not mathematics. Let me give you a clue. It was not science. What was it? It was a phrase, actually. Okay, so I'll take the ball and stick myself. So it was change and go for P. I mean, if you are familiar with that. Change and go for P. So you could see that there was that past then to go out and play, but we didn't have that that facility and infrastructure. So I was totally blown away when I got to Lincoln Community School. Do we have any representatives of Lincoln Community School here? Oh, first of all, none of them is here. But I was totally blown away when I came here. I saw all the facilities. They have everything. Change and go for B would have been fun here. Yes. So I said to myself, I would proudly Except if I am admitted to KG1 here. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh, yes. So, so our next speaker is a high performance training coach. She is experienced in developing athletes into strong disciplines and successful players. She has educated many athletes in rules, strategies, sportsmanship and performance principles. She is a positive role model for team athletes and community members. And that is the very reason why in the next 20 minutes we will be hearing the field hockey coach of Field Hockey Canada, our proud performing organization. Help me welcome on Zoom, Sophia Willia, with a round of applause. Hello, Hello Sophia, Sophia, can you hear me? Hello, Hello Sophia. Sophia. Okay. 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 Put your hands together. Put your hands together. She will join us in due time. Okay. okay. That's, the That's the power of technology. technology. Hockey, Hockey Youth Empowerment, Empowerment Summit, Summit 2022. 2022. Yes, yes, indeed, it, it begins, begins with, with you. you. So, so I'm going to invite a young, young man on stage. stage. If you, you look, look back, back, you can see some amazing pictures of pencil, pencil drawings. drawings. He's, He's very, very skilled, skilled in drawing, drawing with, with just with a pencil. pencil. Some, some of us, us if you give us a pencil, pencil, all we can do is to do something. Yeah, We can't do anything with pencil. But he's talented and skilled with pencil drawing. So I'm going to invite on stage. He is a musician as well. He plays the bass guitar. He sings as well. So he does music and artists. So, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome on stage Casa Sowell Ajeti with a round of applause. Do it better for him. Do it better for him.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, IS 2022. Oh, it looks like your energy level is down. IS 2022. Okay, so whilst the drawing is going on, our next speaker is ready to speak with us. And without much I do, she is ready. With a round of applause, let's invite the high performance coach of Field Hockey Canada, Sophia Willia, with a round of applause. Yes. Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. I hope everybody can hear me. Can everybody hear me over there? Okay, great. Um, firstly, I would like to just say thank you so much for inviting me to this very, very prestigious and honorable, um, honorable event. I think it's amazing to have these events in different countries in order for the support of field hockey to be successful uh, worldwide. I am coming to you from Vancouver, BC, which is uh, located in Canada. And right now the time is 3.10, 3 a.m. in the morning. (laughs) 
I would just like to say that um, I'm very grateful again, like I said, to be here today um, and have this conversation with you all. I would like to start off by just talking a little bit about myself and what my story is. Um, I love field hockey and to me field hockey is my first love, really. Um, since I was little, I always played with my father and we were at the field, um, you know, a lot. And as I got a little bit older and while I played other sports, I decided that field hockey was a sport for me. And that's just truly was the passion that I had for the game. And slowly, slowly, I started realizing that I really enjoy the sport and it gives me a lot of happiness. And that's when I decided to pursue it very seriously. Um, that's when I started training a lot individually by myself and putting in time and effort. I, and, um, once I was about 13 years old, I was lucky enough to train with the Canadian women's national team. I was one of the youngest ones to train there. And it was an honor to, to work with a lot of the amazing coaches and players. And as I slowly continued to train, um, as time went on, I was able to uh, secure a full ride scholarship to go to the school in the States. Um, I was lucky enough to go to school at Rutgers University, a Division I program in New Jersey. This program really gave me a lot of life lessons and values that I still instill with me today. And I was able to receive this and a free education due just to the fact of field hockey. So that's kind of where I would like to stop and just talk about, um, you know, the, the, the world of field hockey and the endless opportunities. We're here today uh, to encourage you all to continue playing the sport and finding your passion for the sport. The sport itself can be complex sometimes and can come with lots of highs and lows. But I would like to say that Field hockey has so many, so many possibilities. You can pursue this sport at a professional level and continue to play in the States in a Division I uh, school or a Division II or three. Receive a full ride scholarship in which you become a student athlete. You're a student first and you complete your education and go from there. I currently work in the medical line. I'm a registered nurse in Canada. And that is my current full-time jo uh, job. And I also coach for Field Hockey Canada. So I would love to just really put out there something that I value from my years of experience is that if you're willing to put the hard work in, you don't have the, to have the best field hockey stick or the best field hockey shoes. But if you have the most passion and if you have the most willingness to, to help yourself grow and help yourself become the best possible athlete on the field you will do great and you will continue to persevere and secure those spots that you always dream of um hockey is amazing and it comes from very very different origins in terms of countries it comes from india it comes from africa it comes from australia it comes from the europeans european countries um but really hockey is something that's one of the one of the, um, you know, biggest, biggest kind of sports that we all need in, in our international, um, capacity. So that being said, that just means that a lot of people play, a lot of people watch and that there's a lot of resources out there in the world to kind of get to your dreams and, and reach your goals. So that's really all I wanted to say today. I think it's amazing that you have this amazing event um, and, and I know that, you know, a lot of time, a lot of effort have, has gone gone into this event to create such an amazing opportunity for you all. And that's all I really wanted to share is that if you're willing to try and you're willing to work hard, I can promise you, I can guarantee you that you will secure the spots that you're looking for and secure the, you know, the teams that you want to make, the scholarships that you want to get and things like that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nora. Thank you so much. A round of applause for her.
Okay, so let me remind you that the male washroom is on my left and the female washroom is on my right. So you can make yourself comfortable anytime. So I'm going to invite our next speaker, who is a banker of the Bank of Ghana and also a member of the Olympic panel. And he has been appointed in the FIH. So before that, I want to ask how he does that, how he does that as a professional banker and also um, as an FIH Olympic panel member. He's going to tell us how he does that. He's going to tell us in the next 20 minutes. So I want to encourage you that whatever you are doing in school, you can still play hockey and enjoy the game. So, ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause, help me welcome Mr. Frank Oti Mensa. Oh, with a round of applause. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Um, as mentioned, my name is Frank Oti Mensa. Um, let me quickly answer his question because I, I get to answer it anywhere I go. Uh, mostly people ask you, uh, especially they look at my passport with the immigration and they're like, you're a central banker and what has it got to do with hockey? And I need to explain what, how I'm able to play both roles. Um, that is hockey for you. I, I would always tell you is the only sport that you combine education with. Um, my journey started in 1982. It's a long one, so I wouldn't want to bore you with it. But what I would say is that um, when I started playing hockey, anywhere I go, the seniors there will always ask your qualification or academic credentials. Today, as we speak, Saturday, we are playing our league at the hockey stadium and once you get there as a young man and you start playing, or a lady, you start playing, the next question is, are you in school? Always, that's the first question they will ask you. And if you are not, we have evidence of people who um, their mothers used to sell at the Tema station and not having anywhere to keep their kids, throw them at the hockey stadium. And some of them are gainfully employed now after school. Some of them are even playing our national team very skillful and educated. So I want to encourage you, you cannot miss it with hockey. Hockey is my passion. It's the only thing I do and I forget anything else. I remember um, when I, I was um, younger and I wanted to attend secondary school. I played in a day secondary school. I saw people training. I just walked there. And I was so fascinated uh, with the stick and the ball and the movements. So I got to learn how to play. You know, our time, we, we compete for good schools after our O-level exams. So, and uh, there was a particular school in Brown who I wanted to attend. So after our results and, you know, protocol and all that, I was about missing getting that school. And the sportsmaster went to whisper to the headmaster that, that guy plays for the regional team, so we need him. And that is how I got my recruitment into the school, through hockey. Then after sixth form, I went to University of Science and Technology. And that was the time we were to pair threes and four, the beginning of that uh, um, uh, program, that we were supposed to pair more than two in the schools, in our various halls. I didn't get because I got to school late. So I was working, I was coming to school from home. Then one day I saw them playing hockey uh, at, the, at the field. So I rushed home, packed my things and got my stick, went to the pitch. Just after the game, there were four, uh, you know, we have Katanga, Queen's Hall, in, uh, Independence Hall and Unity Hall. All the hall masters and the Sports chairmen were there waiting to give me a room because everybody wanted me to play for their hall. 
Whilst people were sleeping threes and fours, I remember as a first year student, I slept in a flat for one year alone. And those who were in, in UST um, 91, they about can check this record. I was the only first year student sleeping in the flat because of hockey. Then after uh, I came with a team from Kumasi to play in Accra. Those times we used, we used to play National League to qualify us to play in the club championships uh, beyond Ghana. It's an African tournament. So we used to come from our, our save villages to come and play in Accra. And even till today, hockey is seriously played only in Accra. So I came after my game. A man walks to me and is like, I want you to play for my team. So I don't know anybody in Accra, so I cannot come to Accra. And I ran off into the bus. We left to Kumasi. Then the second time, Sunyani qualified to come to Accra. So I came with them as well. And the same man came to me. I want you to play for my club. And lo and behold, the, the man was the team manager of Bank of Ghana Hockey Club, which is SJKS Hockey Club. That time, I accepted to play. So I used to commute weekend from Kumasi to Accra to play and go back. And I did that till I completed the university. And I told him one day, I'm going back. I finished uh, school. I may be posted anywhere. So that may be the end. And he said, no, we will still want to keep you. I said, I don't know what to do. So later, somebody told me, go to the National Service Secretariat and something can be done. It was there I was told that then go back to whichever organization you are playing for. Once they give you a letter, you could do your national service here. And that's how I got my national service at the Bank of Ghana because I was playing for the club uh, owned by the bank. And there's, there's one thing I want to draw your attention to. And I, I hope one day somebody does a research on that. All those who are playing hockey and are very passionate with hockey, plus education, have very high level careers. Very, very high level careers. As of now, even at our pitch now, we have our senior team, the masters categories. If the person is not a CEO of his company, is beyond the middle management, most of them. It tells me that if you commit yourself to your education, including hockey, you're going to get far. Because our game is highly technical, and you need to combine a lot of, you need skill, you need stamina, you, you, you need to be very smart to play. And I'm sure that also affects our education as well. I want to point us to something even now and here. I don't know when I would have had the opportunity to meet Her Excellency, the Canadian High Commissioner. I, I do not know. But today, hockey, because we are all here. And that is some of the things I want to draw your attention to. I had the opportunity to go to a, a, a previous president's office all because of hockey. If I want to talk about my games, it's so much I can I, I remember at a point, every two years I had to change my passport because of hockey. Because after I finished playing, I got into officiating. And now that is what has taken me to the highest level of hockey officiating. We have the Pro League, the Olympics, and the World Cup panel. It's a pool of top-level officials that we are called on to officiate international tournaments. And I'm one of them. I think we are only three in Africa. And mostly, I get called to officiate. And that is how come I travel a lot. I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of big people in the world. And as hockey, we are a family. That's the only sport I know. It's not just the, the, the game. It's not just business, but it's a family. You could travel anywhere, call on any of them, and they are ready to take care of you anyhow possible they can. And that is hockey for you. People talk about other disciplines so much. I want to tell you, hockey was the first team game that took Ghana to a World Cup event. People do not know that thing. Yes, you can check on it. Hockey went to World Cup before football in Ghana. 
I would want to encourage you that with your academics and with hockey, you can go very, very far. Very, very far. People raise the issue of danger. You know, in secondary schools, those times, we didn't know the rules, we didn't know the regulations. We were just chasing each other with the sticks, like in the, in the bush, chasing rats or something. And it scared a lot of people. But those of us who went ahead to still play, we benefited from it. I want you to take it serious. Make it a passion. And I can assure you, you you will not regret it. Because I, I don't know the correlation yet. That is why I'm hoping for a research to be done on it. But all those who play hockey and are committed to it, get very far with their academics, career, and even the game as well. I'm yet to know if there's any other continent. If there were to be an additional continent, I would have been there because of hockey. Because I've been everywhere. So I want to tell you, hockey is a good career. I call it career because it's, it's taking me far. I know elsewhere, that is the job people do. It's all hockey. But you know, our side of the world is a difficult. You need to do something else in addition to get going. I wish to end here and um, maybe as we leave, we share contacts and if anything, we can discuss whether also, I am an educator, an FIH licensed educator. I go all over the world to um, teach people the rules and regulations of hockey. So not playing alone. There are some of you maybe uh, for some reason you cannot actively play. You can also officiate because it's a career as well, especially the umpires. We want young umpires who can also start their career of umpiring and technical officiating from scratch, so that you, you build up with it, because without the official officials, the game also cannot grow. So we want all of you on board, those who are interested, I'm available to take you through. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Frank. Yes, indeed, it's possible to be a student and also have the passion for hockey. Yes, put your hands together for him one more time. It is possible to have a successful career and also play hockey. So, up next, I'll be, we'll be having uh, another lucky winner. Who knows, you might be one. So, but before that, I'll be inviting the Consul of Belgium to Ghana to help us in the lucky draw. But before that, I would want to acknowledge some dignitaries in our midst. We have the Infantiman Headmistress in our midst. Can you give us a wave? Mrs. Phyllis Atta Simpson. Wow. Wow. Hockey Youth Empowerment Summit 2022. Growth, it begins with you. So we have Mr. Patrick Taylor, the head coach of Ghana Army Hockey Club, also in our midst. Mr. Patrick Taylor, can you give us a wave? Mr. Wow. He's seated right at the back. Wow. Also, we have Mr. Isaac Graham, the General Secretary of Greater Accra Hockey. Mr. Isaac Graham, can you give us a wave? Wow. Your presence is duly acknowledged. We also have Mr. Eddie Frimpon, the Head of Sports at Ghana Customs. Mr. Eddie Frimpon, can you give us a wave? Wow. Wow. Your presence here has made this wonderful summit as taxes. We also have the FIH umpire, Mr. Aziz Salami Adima in our midst. Mr. Aziz, can you give us a wave? Wow. He's right behind there. Thank you so much for making it. We also have Mrs. Abigail Sapo, the CEO of Aviation Social Center in our midst. And she didn't come alone. She came with her son, Mr. Sean Sapo, a student. Wow. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation. So, yes, we have another lucky winner. So, I would invite, I would invite them to bring the sticks as I invite Honorable Mr. Dimitri Avram, the Councillor of Belgium. Let's give him a round of, a round of applause. Yes.
throw it better. Who knows? You might be a lucky winner. Yes. So we have some few uh, winners for the Haro Lucky draw. These sticks are from Haro. One of these sticks costs one hundred and seventy-nine dollars. Powerful. One, this one. So that is why they say hockey is very expensive. Yes, and 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 today we've. We are giving more than 15 of them. So if you multiply that by the amount, you realize that so much is going into this. And one of the balls goes for $10. So, um, so the next winner is from Legacy Girls College. Uh, goes to, uh, Florence Watin. Florence Watting, congratulations, Florence, from Legacy Girls. Wow, you have yourself a harrow, stick, and a ball. Congratulations, let's do it better for her. So our next uh, lucky winner is from Rich church school rich church school uh echo dancing mensa echo congratulations echo mensa you want yourself a harrow stick and a ball wow so our next person is from east airport international school that's Idrisu Jada. Idrisu Jada. Okay, I'm told he's not around. Okay, he's not around. Uh, what about Lawson Audrey? Lawson Audrey. Okay, so the next goes to um, Isaac Thomas Jojo from. Uh, Kosovo International School. Wow, Isaac Thomas Jojo, you've won yourself a Harold sports stick and a ball. Congratulations. So, our uh, uh, next winner is from Ghana Christian High International School, Amu Roland. Selom. Amu Roland Selom. Roland Selom. Congratulations. So our next uh, student is from Achimota. Return cancer. Congratulations. So our next student is from Infantiman School, Eunice Mens. Eunice. Wow. Infantiman has two already. Two lucky winners. In fact, man has two lucky winners. Congratulations. We have... So, we have the lucky winner, the, I think the final lucky winner from Aka Girls. Uh, Mesa Sylvia. Aka Girls. Mesa Sylvia. Congratulations. So this is from Harrowsford. A gift from Harrowsford to you. Wow. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thank Honorable. Honorable. Thank you very much, Mr. Kozo Lumo. So I want to remind you that our proud sponsors for this year's summit is Haro Sports and Leshego. So I would, I would quickly want to invite Leshego to, to, talk, to talk about Leshego, yeah. But before I do that, let me acknowledge the presence of Mr. Edward Apo. Mr. Edward Apo, the sports officer of Ghana Fire Service. Mr. Edward Apo, please give us a wave. All right. So, David from Lesego, kindly join me upstage and say something to us about Lesego. Yes. Let's give him a round of applause. Yes. Oh, let's do it better. David. Good morning. I trust we are all well. Great. So my name is Dave Lumore and I'm from Let's a Savings and Loans Company. Here in Ghana we have twenty six branches across the nation. And our head office is here in Accra just opposite the Silver Star Towers. So at Letseho, we offer loan opportunities to government workers, private schools, and businesses. So with our payroll loans, our payroll loans are for the government salaried workers. So we have loans ranging from six months up to a maximum of six years. And I'll speak more about our savings and our new application called the Let's Go Digital Mall. So with our savings opportunity, we have a savings account called the Let's Go account. Now with this account, you can access it by USSD star 714 star 777 hash. And our interest rates are from 12 to 14 percent per annum. So when you sign up for the Let's Go account, you're able to keep money in there and withdraw it with ease. From the 1st of June, we are going to introduce an upgraded USSD that now allows you to withdraw the cash direct. So you go to a vendor and you are able to access the Let's Go account and withdraw cash instead of going through... um transferring it from your let's go to your mobile money and then now going to a mobile money agent to withdraw. So now we are making everything easy for everyone who wants to work with us. Now when it comes to our fixed deposits, our fixed deposit starts from 1,000 Ghana CDs and we have some of the best interest rates. Currently our 91 day fixed deposit has an interest of 17.33%. It's very competitive and it's very easy to sign up. You can just see any of my colleagues at the back there would explain more about the fixed deposit. So finally, before I hand over the mic, I'll talk about the Let's Go Digital Mall. Now, the Let's Go Digital Mall is an application that has everything you need. You can access loans from the app. You can save. You can get fit. And you can even learn. So, on the app, when you access the Let's Go app, it's on the Play Store and the Apple Store, it's Let's Go. You see blue with Let's Go in the middle and with savings on the app you're able to track your progress so you can set a target that maybe for the month of june i would like to save 
1,000 Ghana cities. How will I achieve this target? So we come up with a savings plan, a daily savings plan. So you know that maybe every day I would save 30 cities. And we'll prompt you if you are meeting your targets or exceeding your targets. So I would advise everyone who has a smartphone to just log on to your Play Store, download the Let's Go Digital app, and explore new opportunities. It's a mall. You can do everything there. You can learn. You can get fit. You can get your dieting plan, and you can save and invest with us. So we would like you to do business with us. We are the back. You can just see us. And let's go big with our passion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. A round of applause for him once again. So we are drawing the program to a close, but I have a short quiz for everyone here. Everyone has the opportunity to win this ball and stick. So I would ask three questions. If you are lucky, you can get yourself a ball and a stick. So are we ready? Oh, are we ready? Hockey Youth Empowerment Summit 2022. Yes, but before that, I would like to acknowledge the presence of Mrs. Patience Ameye. Are you here in our midst? Please give us a wave. Mrs. Patience Ameye, please give us a wave. Okay, okay. So, we have Mr. Joseph Boche. Mr. Joseph Boche. Mr. Joseph Boche. Okay, wow, wow, wow. He is here, seated right here. You are warmly welcome in your presence. Acknowledged. So, back to my quiz. Are you ready? Oh, are you ready? Okay. So, how many players form a hockey team? <laughs> Actually, I'm not going to call those with hands lifted because you already know the answer. Oh. Okay, lift your hands if you know. So which school hasn't gotten any um, Accra? Okay, so okay, I'll give you. Come, come here. Tell us your name. My name. My name is just. Please. Okay. Tell us the answer. Eleven place. Okay. So, Justice from Accra Academy, right? Kindly take your seat. He's on, but that's not the answer. Okay. So Raphael from which school? AIS says sixteen, and it's not the answer too. Ha ha ha. Who else? Who else? Who else? Okay, so actually, if you are wrong with this question, I'll actually redraw one hockey stick and a ball from you. So if you don't know, just put your hands down. I'm just kidding. You can lift your hands. So, okay, you. Okay, so Claudia from St. Mary's, what's the answer? 14. Oh, that's a lucky try. Yes, who else? Okay. Tell us your name. Wow. What the answer? 20 players. We are close to the answer, but that's not the answer. Oh, more hands, more hands. <laughs> okay, you are desperate. Okay, you. What's your name? Fauzi, what's the answer? 18 players. Which school? Accra girls. Let's put up. 
let's give it up for her. 18 players. 18 players. She got she got it right. So Fauzia, kindly. Okay, so kindly join me off stage. And sorry. And I would invite Mr. Frank to do us the honor. Yes. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. There are two more lucky winners. Congratulations, Fazia. Thank you so much, Mr. Frank. All right. So my next question. I know many of you have watched football. And you know the number of cards issued when there is a foul play. But what about hockey? How many cards are issued? Or how many cards do we have in the game? Wow, more hands. More hands. Okay, so I want to go to Accra Academy. I'll give you a last shot. So you again, okay? All right, come here. What's your name? So Justice was the number. Just drawing boxes and triangles. Yes. So we have our last speaker to speak with us from Canada. She's going to speak to us from Zoom. And she has earned 50 international trophies. Wow, 50. 5 0 international trophies from the year 1983 to 1992. Where were you? Throughout her high school, she was awarded four MVPs in her athletic career, yet maintained an average of A throughout her high school career. Those of you wondering how, she's going to tell us in the next 20 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Field Hockey Canada coaching staff for the Next Gen program in Ontario, Canada, Bernadette Boyer, with a round of applause. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Can you just let me know if my connection's okay and you're hearing me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Perfect. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, hello, students, teachers, parents, honored guests. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank uh, Kojo and Field Hockey Canada for inviting me to speak today. Uh, it's always truly an honor to be in the presence of so many enthusiastic young people with a desire to learn and grow. Um, I've been asked to share my story, particularly on how being a field hockey player, in addition to performing with my academics, has, has shaped my life. Um, to talk about how my involvement in this amazing sport took me from being a high school player to being an Olympian and now a high performance coach within the Next Gen program. I cannot even imagine having an identity, an identity outside of field hockey, even though I was distant from the sport for, for a few years after a setback I encountered. And it's always a happy occasion when I get to talk about field hockey. What my biggest challenge today is to convey um, some of those thoughts in a greater than boring way and not allow you to fall asleep. Um, Kojo or whoever our hosts, you must stop me if too many students are falling asleep during my talk because I can't see anyone on my Zoom call. When I talk of my Olympic experience or field hockey experience, there are always a few things people want to know. The first things people ask me is how I did in Barcelona. I competed in the Barcelona Summer Olympic Games in 1992 when I was 24 years old. And now I know all you great students are trying to do the math and figure out how old I am. What people really mean with that question is, did you win a medal? And rarely does anyone ask what it took for me to qualify for the games. Who supported me? What challenges did I encounter? What kind of commitment did I have to make? What kind of things did I sacrifice? And so on. And sacrifice being a good thing uh, to get to the Olympic Games. People want to know a result measured by a medal around my neck. We live in a culture where success sometimes needs to be based on an end result. 
I would imagine for that for some of you in the academic or the business world at school, large or small, it's the same. Success for you may be measured by a mark, a school mark or a dollar amount, but not by the proverbial blood, sweat and tear, anxiety, anguish, intense creativity, integrity, dedication and commitment to quality that you have invested in your business or your school marks. My feeling on the whole end result thing, which for an Olympian is a gold medal, was very eloquently put in a wise quote. And that quote said, a gold medal is a nice thing, but if if you are not enough without it, you will never be enough with it. And that quote is from the really fun movie. I think maybe you've heard of it. It's called Cool Runnings. It's about a Jamaican bobsled team trying to compete in the Winter Olympics. Okay, it's not a very profound movie, but it's worth the watch. To answer the first question, we placed seventh in Barcelona. And please don't misinterpret what I said. I was bitterly disappointed not to medal, and that's what I went for, nothing less. However, placing seventh in the world was a truly awesome thing. Usually the next question is, oh, you were seventh? How many teams were there? To which I have to respond, eight. (laughs) Actually, getting to the Olympics was in many ways more difficult than playing in them. How did I start to play this strange sport of field hockey? And maybe some of you can relate. As as you watch any Olympic coverage or inspiring stories of sports athletes, you will hear how each athlete arrived at the pinnacle of their sport uniquely different. For me, it's awesome to listen to everyone's story and know that success can come from almost any place. And the same, it goes for you and anywhere in the world. There are some traditional paths that you can follow to success, but there also are there unorthodox Incredible stories of success that are so inspiring. Each of you and your life story, your experiences about how you achieve success or will set goals is is equally inspiring to me. I did not actually start playing field hockey until I was in grade 10, around 15 years old. A friend I looked up to asked me for a favor at my high school. Of course, anything for her because she was two grades older than me. And I looked up to her. It was the spring. I was in grade nine and I played soccer, as we call it here. I love soccer. But my friend had a difficult sociology teacher at her school, our school. He was also the coach of the field hockey team. He told his athletes that he would not accept their assignments unless they would give him the name of a girl in the school to be a new recruit for a team in the fall. I'm not sure that would be allowed nowadays, but it was a fun way to recruit new players. He likes soccer players because field hockey is very similar strategically and positionally to soccer. Same size field, same number of players, and so on, as I'm sure you are aware. My friend asked me if she could submit my name, but no worry, because come the fall, he would forget about me. And even if he didn't, he couldn't make me play, she said. I said, okay, but for sure, I would never play. And mostly because of the uniform. They wore skirts or kilts or something. And I thought, for me at the time, what kind of stupid sport is played in a dress? Well, to continue, this teacher was also an Ontario provincial coach. And that year, our hometown was hosting the senior national field hockey tournament. He said to me, very excited, the best Olympic players in the country are coming here to play for their province in the ultimate competition. And I was like, so who cares? I wasn't playing anyway, and I didn't know this game. When he called me at the beginning of the summer, it was for two reasons. Number one, he wanted to give me a running and training schedule to prepare for the fall season. And number two, he needed us to prepare the high school fields for this big championship. We had to rake the grass. I was so ready to say no, but my mom, God bless her, stepped in and told me that I had given my name and I was going to help him with the tournament. After that, I did not have to play in the fall if I did not like it. The decision would be mine. Well, obviously, as you heard the end result, I loved the game so much that I played. And eventually, I could even endure wearing the kilt. So began the acquisition of the many hockey lessons I learned by playing field hockey, which I would like to convey to you. 
lesson one, the biggest one at that time that I would carry throughout hockey and my life is honor your commitments. Seek commitment as a positive and necessary part of your life. It is only to your benefit, your reputation and self-worth that you have integrity and honor your word. Do what you say you are going to do. This is so true, especially when what you commit to may be difficult, challenging, or seems insurmountable. If I had not joined that team, I would not have competed at the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona. I would not have shook with pride in hearing my name or national anthem being played, wore the Canadian flag on my jersey, or pushed myself to the limit for the ultimate experience. I would not have had the elation of knowing that me, a small town girl from a rural area with not much money, my family was not wealthy, how I could get to the pinnacle of sport. Every day I tried to pass on that exhilaration and passion to my athletes and my own children. Any one of them and you have the possibility to achieve greatness. Every person I have ever talked to has a story. The question to most of us becomes, are you willing to listen and learn? After speaking with Kojo, I saw many similarities between your country and where I live in Ontario, Canada. Hockey can be an expensive sport. A stick itself here can cost over $500. That's significant for our athletes. In Ontario, we only have two water-based turf fields. Out in British Columbia on the West Coast, they have more. But most of our clubs fight over training time. Right. And we struggle sometimes to get players to engage in this wonderful game. When you encounter difficulties like that, time management, costs and conflicts. Another lesson I learned is always take and appreciate help from others. Anything that I have ever achieved that is worthwhile, I have not done alone. I may have done the work, put in the effort, but I always needed advice and support and care. I learned never to be afraid to ask for help and seek advice from those truly that wanted to help and had my best interests in mind. There sometimes is a better way to do things. My coaches supported me to the fullest with my training, <clears throat> school team, eventually even driving me when necessary to practices downtown in Toronto, which was a distance for me. I eventually attended the University of Toronto for four years and earned my degree in criminology. My career goal was always to be a police officer. While I was at my University of Toronto, my goals and training were right on track, or at least I thought. But here comes my next lesson. Set your goals high, and if you don't succeed, you're only that much, much closer for your next attempt. I told you I made the 1992 games, but my initial goal was to make the 1988 games in Korea. I believed I was at the top of my game. I was named Athlete of the Year, but I didn't make that team. I was first reserve. It was dev devastating and at the time hard for me not to be angry or nasty, but I had to endure. Being an athlete teaches you to take and understand constructive criticism because it's not about putting you down, but rather making you better. I finished my last year at university and thought I was probably done with my Olympic ambitions. I did get hired by a police force. I was dating a man I knew was going to be my future husband and figured it was time to move on. In 1991, I'd been policing for almost two years when I received that glorious call to come back and try for the Olympic qualifying team. I made that team and we traveled to Australia for intense training for the qualifier that was in Auckland, New Zealand. I had never experienced such pressure. Tensions were high. Coaches' jobs were on the line and we needed to produce. Training was hard, rigorous and exhausting, but we loved it. What did this grueling training regime teach me? Another lesson, that I had courage and determination and I could draw on that in difficult times and it would be enough to get me through. I learned this by playing field hockey. I have drawn on this all my life. Playing on a team created a place of fun, stability, and safety for me. We looked out for each other and became a family working together towards a common goal. I know some of you have put in those insane hours as well on your studies or in other areas of your life. Please know that if you desire it, you will have the time and energy to put into your education 
and sport at the same time because you will be more focused and goal oriented. Neither your playing nor your academics has to suffer when you commit fully to both. You will master your organizational skills to get it all done. And when you need help, people will be there for you. Overall, coping with the experience of having to perform under pressure was most valuable in my life. I trained myself to handle pressure, which carried over my real life into interviews for my future career. <clears throat> Excuse me. I knew that if I put in the effort and was prepared, when put to the test, I would handle it. I would always give my best. I did this for my policing job and do this in my coaching career now. I prepare. I give my best. I show up ready to perform. I act how others want. How, I act how I want others to be and how I want them to treat me. I learned this in sport. In every interview I've ever participated in, people are always excited to hear about my experience. Employers want their employees here to have a variety of life experiences and are especially excited to know that <clears throat> you have been involved in teamwork and team building. They are valuable assets in any field of study or career. As much as I learned from positive experiences in field hockey, though, I also learned from difficult ones as well. At the Barcelona Olympics, I suffered a total tear of my anterior cruciate ligament in my left knee in our last game against New Zealand. I attended the closing ceremonies in pain and in a wheelchair. At minimum, recovery would take six months. I was worried about my playing career, my policing career, and I was devastated. Doctors told me that if I ever wanted an active lifestyle, I needed surgery to repair it. And many people go through it and come out quite okay. But I needed a healthy knee to police. Ironically, the surgery that was supposed to be give back my life took everything at the time. Shortly after the repair, I developed a total sepsis in my knee. I had an infection so bad it threatened to take my leg. It ate away the repair at my knee joint. So I was forced to give up on my playing career and my police career. My knee would never heal as it needed to. And it was questionable if I could ever walk again properly. That's the time to dig deep. If you were to close your eyes right now, sitting there, and imagine everything you love doing, everything you're good at, and made you feel worthwhile, and have that taken away from you, you might understand how I felt. But you don't stop. You're trained to always seek for better. I immediately asked for a new surgeon. The one I found worked very hard on my knee, and two years later, in 13 surgeries, I was able to walk again. And through this, there were times when I was not a nice person, when I pitied myself and was humiliated and was very angry. But again, all the valuable lessons learned came forward. Handle the pain, the pressure, be courageous and determined, commit to the rehab and let people help start again. <clears throat> I changed my career, became an academic trainer for adults. I became a foster parent with my husband and took in needy children. I renewed my passion for the game through coaching. Five years ago, when they figured I was old enough, I could have a knee replacement and move on from the trauma. My husband and I became foster parents when our first baby was three months old. 25 years later, we have three grown children, still two foster children and a dog. Working with young people has offered me some of the most rewarding times of my life. <clears throat> Excuse me. Though I could never play after my injury and infection, coaching hockey gives me such energy and joy. I will compete anywhere, anytime, as it is just so much fun. In my house, everything is a competition. How far can we throw the garbage? Who can drink water the fastest? Who wins at darts or table tennis? It is who I am. I will try to sum all of this up that I have conveyed to you today. Based on my playing experience and my philosophy in coaching is that providing enjoyable and formative positive athletic experiences is essential to developing skills and strategies that an individual, and that is you, 
will use lifelong. Developing your capacity in field hockey will directly correlate with your ability as a student to accomplish your goals. You should be involved in experiences that are fun and challenging. You, as athletes and students, will be accountable to yourselves and to your teammates. You will be disciplined in your skill acquisition and hardworking to perfect them. You will respect and support your teammates, trust in the plan, and implement agreed-upon strategies. You will be inclusive, regardless of all the differences your teammates will present. You will develop mental toughness to overcome adversity and in turn gain self-confidence. You will always give your best. You will demonstrate discipline and humility in the face of victory and defeat and be highly motivated to succeed. The combination of belonging to a team, learning skills, tactics, and specific athletic abilities properly promotes independence in athletes that you will use all your life. It develops the belief that one can tackle and solve problems. Please trust us, I can say it now, older generations that care for you when we say young people need goals, direction, and inspiration to direct their lives, and a combination and a variety of things. Positive sport experiences can correlate directly to development of productive life skills. Strong, inclusive sport experience teach a person to make good choices, develop impeccable habits, and work with others they would not normally have to, such as others who possess different skills and abilities, personalities and cultures different from their own. Athletes learn to collaborate to succeed. They complement each other and invest in the good of another towards a common goal, even under challenging circumstances. Teamwork, I believe, produces resilient people. It is my role to be competent and prepared to provide these opportunities for athletes. I value you and all that you bring to the table. <clears throat> I trust that you will also make me a better person. And just in closing, I want to tell you, I encourage you all to try the sport of field hockey or continue playing and sincerely hope to see you on a pitch in Ghana or in Canada in the future. My friends, do both sport and school. You will not regret it. And like me, amazing things may come from this off chance that you try something you've never done before. These, these are the thoughts I live by. Thank you for inviting me today. I wish you peace and success in all of your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you very much, Benedict. A round of applause for her. You will not regret it. Yes, indeed, you will not regret it. Hockey is, uh, hockey is an athlete, I mean, a sport that gives you a lot of experience, a lot of passion. Yes, so because of my kind heart, I want to still give out some sticks and balls. And I would want a volunteer to come and demonstrate for us how to use the ball and the stick. And I'll have Mr. Eddie Frimpon, the immediate past head coach of national hockey, to do as the honor. But before that, let me acknowledge some dignitaries. We have Mrs. Patience Ameye in our midst, the auditor with Ghana Audit Service. Please give us a wave if you are here. Wow, she's seated right there. Put your hands together for her. Thank you so much for making it. We also have Mr. Parkwesi Bafo Boni, the videographer of the national team. Mr. Parkwesi Bafo Boni, give us a wave. Wow. Thank you so much for making it. We also have Mr. Kojo Lumo, the CEO of Ball and Sticks Uncle, right here in this. Mr. Joseph Botri. Yes, Mr. Joseph Botri. That's the CEO of Ball and Sticks Uncle. Let's give it up for him. Wow. Thank you so much for making it. We also have the best player of the female national team in our midst. She's in the person of Mrs. Elizabeth Opoku, the customs officer, Mrs. 
Elizabeth Opoku, please give us the wave. Wow, Mrs. Elizabeth Opoku, thank you so much for coming. Wow, thank you so much. So, I would want to dash out, I would want to give out some sticks and balls. So, I want a volunteer from any school. This is your opportunity to take home a ball and a stick. So, I want a volunteer to demonstrate to us how to use the ball from your teammate. Yes. yes. And I would invite Mr. Eddie Frimpong, the head of sports customs, to be our judge as to whether they did it right or not. So, let's invite Mr. Eddie Frimpong. So, any more volunteers? Any more volunteers? Okay. So, come here. Come off stage. You must have a ball and a stick from your school. Yes. Any more volunteers? So, you have the opportunity to win another ball and stick. Wow. Oh, are these all the volunteers? Two people can come from two, I mean, the same school. You can, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of sticks and balls for you. No, it's okay, actually. It's okay. So, yes, Mr. Eddie Frempon, you are going to be our judge. If they don't do it well, we, we might take the stick and the ball from them. So, who is going to be the first? So, are you going to be the first? You're a striker, right? Okay. Let, what's your name? Oh, Maridia. Yes, let's put our, let's put our hands for Maridia. So, Maridia is going to shoot her shot. But if she doesn't do it well, or you can go, I mean, this is your field. Yeah. You can, you can go as long as that end. Hey, wait too. Wow. So what, what, how do you call what you just did? Oh, so that's the hit. Put your hands together for Maria. That's the hit. So, Mr. Eddie Fripo, did she do it well? Oh, she did it well. Wow. Wow. Infantiman Senior High School, you have another ball and stick. Put your hands together for Maria. Oh, she can't find her ball. She can't find. Okay. That's your ball. Maria. Come back here. Yeah, that's your ball. You hit it very hard. <laughs> Put your hands together for Maria. So, Maria, you have another. You've won your team. Yes. Put your hands together for Infantiman Senior High School. They really came prepared. Yes. You should be recruited to the national team. So, Mr. Diffenpong, kindly join me here as we present. Yes, kindly join me here in the middle so that the Let's put our hands together for the technical team. They've done so well. Oh, put your hands together for the technical team. My videographer, the sound men, they've done so well. Connecting people, speakers, all the way from Canada. And you are seated right there. You can hear them. Put your hands together for the technical team. So, Maria, you have yourself a ball and a stick. Congratulations. Infantiman Senior High School. So, okay, thank you very much. You may take your seat. All right. So, what's your name? Gifty. So, you are here to demonstrate pushing. Okay. Wait, wait. I think I need to give you the microphone. Yeah. I'm Gifty. I'm here to demonstrate pushing. And with pushing... You have to plant your stick right after the ball. With pushing, there is no sound. With pushing, there is no sound. So let's wait. Let's pay attention. If you hear any sound, she is disqualified. Yeah. Oh. Put your hands together for Gifty. Coach Eddie, please. Is she right? Yes, yes she is. Oh, she is right. In front of one senior high school. You have yourself another ball and stick. Congratulations. Gifty. You want yourself a ball and a stick. So. Okay.
Okay, okay. So, hold on. I would want every one of us to have equal chance to the ball and sticks. So, give T, you have to hold on. Okay. In front of my senior high school, do you agree? Okay. Give you have to hold on. So, our next team player, what's your name? Dribbling. Okay, so show us how to dribble. Oh, do it better for her. Do it better for her. Mr. Lamte, did she dribble well? I sure she could dribble you. Oh, wow. Put your hands together for her. Okay, so that's Dribble from St. Mary's. Okay, so what are you going to do? Tell us your name. Robert Parkwisi Asari from Rich Chess School. Okay, so what are you going to do? You also Dribble. So let's see if you Dribble better than Mary. A lot of techniques in dribbling. Wow. Wow. Oh. This is my first time I'm seeing this. Wow. Wow. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Wow. 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 So we are actually going to see if He dribbled well at the end of the uh, uh, the game. So, what's your name? Tell me. This mark from Achimota. What are you going to do? You also drill the ball and pass. Who are you passing to? Me? Okay. You just dribble and pass. Wow. Put your hands together for him. He dribbled and he passed to the lady right there. Oh, put your hands together for him. So our next team player, what's your name? Raphael. You scoop the ball. Wow. Like ice cream. Scoop. Scoop. That's a nice scoop. Put your hands together. So I would be inviting the FIH to explain something to us briefly. Eugen from AI. So there's scooping and there's weeping. Okay, show us. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Put your hands together for him. He really swept the ball. So there's scooping in and there's weeping. So what's your name? Oh, from Presec Legon. You are going to dribble. Okay. You are going to dribble. Wait. With a dribbling, I want you to invite... Your teammates from Prestec. Anyone with another ball and stick from Prestec? Or you dribble yourself? Okay, so any, any school can rep. 
Okay, anyone, anyone can. So you, you will dribble and pass. To, so let's have you also being representing his teammates. He will dribble him and he will pass to you. Okay, so do that. Oh, you have, you have a teammate. Okay, that's your teammate. So you pass to your teammate. Oh, come back. Yes, he will dribble you actually. Make sure he doesn't dribble you. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Put your hands together for Accra Academy. Bleo. He didn't succeed in dribbling him. All right. So, what are you going to do? Tell us your name. You are Jeffrey, and you are going to tell us or demonstrate how to do Indian dribbling. Wow, there are types of dribbling. Put your hands together. Indian dribbling. On display. Wow. Indian dribbling. Who else did dribbling here? What's the name of your dribbling? Oh, you don't know? Okay. All right. Don't worry. So, gentlemen, tell us your name. Right. Brian. Brian. Okay. From Christian Home. Christian High. So, tell us what you're going to do. You will? You also dribble. Which type of dribbling? Indian dribbling. So, with the Indian dribbling, can you, can I call someone to, okay. So, any volunteer? You will. Why? Okay, you want him to dribble you. So, make sure you dribble him well, though. Yes. Indian dribbling on display. Wow. Wow. That was a smart play. That was a smart play. That was a smart play. Wow. So, my final hockey team member. What are you going to do? Tell us your name. Your name is Chris Fell. Okay, Chris Fell. From Rich Church. Okay, what are you going to do? You're also going to dribble. Which type of dribbling? Any. Ah, you're not a player. So you are doing what you know. Okay. So who wants to volunteer? No, no, not you. You are a very good attacker. You want to, you want to challenge him. Okay. So show us display. A lady wants to challenge a guy for the first time. Wow. Wow. On the first attempt. <laughs> Wow, put your hands together for them all. They have done really well. A lady challenged the guy for, on the first attempt. Wow. Wow, put your hands together for them. They've done so well. So, I will invite Mr. Frank Oti Mr. to explain something with regards to what they did here. All right. Yes, um, it's about the question we, the first question we, uh, we asked about the number of players. I know a gentleman gave an answer here, and we said it's not right. Let's, let's get it, because before they go with the wrong impression. On the field of play, we play 11 aside. So each team has 11. <laughs> but, but the 18 is the entry list for the whole tournament. So we should have clarified our question before we we asked for that. So the 18 is, is the entry list for the tournament, and the 11 is on the field of play. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Franco T. Wow. So 11 players on the field, 18 on the entry. So, Mr. Eddie, you're going to tell us whom you deem the winner of 
this contest. All right. All right. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I think the most important thing we need to identify is the passion and drive that you have in them. Each and every one here is a winner. And I will encourage the sports masters and sports mistresses to urge them, have the desire of hockey, bring them around to the hockey stadium. Let's see what we can put together. Um, I identified two different skills. That's the driving skill and the one who did the scoop. With the driving skill, I think this lady did very well. And the student that did the scoop. Okay, so she is the winner, I guess. What's your name again? Mary Bonnie. Congratulations. Mary Bonnie from St. Mary Senior High School. You have won your teammates a hockey stick and a ball. Congratulations. So thank you very much. You are all winners. You are all winners. In due time, I'll, I'll give you your sticks. And there's one more. Okay, okay. The sweeping and the scooping. Okay. So, the scoop, the scoop is the winner. Put your hands together for Mr. Scoop. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right. Okay. So, thank you very much, all of you. You are all winners. You are all winners. Put your hands together for them. Thank you very much. Put your hands together for everyone. Everyone, I mean, you've done so well. Amazing. Amazing. I, I was seeing some of the displays for the first time. Sweeping, scooping, Indian dribbling. Yeah, amazing. I want to join hockey. How many of you want to join hockey? Wow. So see me and register your name. Yes, see me and register your name if you want to join hockey. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the close of the event. And uh, I want to invite one person. I have one last winner. It's a special package for the person. What he or she has learned in this conference, in this summit. Anyone at all? Anyone at all? What have you learned? Hey, Infantiman. You really put your hands together for Infantiman. You guys really prepared before coming. Yes. So, what's your name? Yes. My name is Trisha. I'm in Fansman Girls in High School. And then I've learned a lot. I've learned, I've learned that as sports girls, we can do lots of things attached to what we do in, in addition to academics. I've also learned that sports can take you to many places you've never been before. I can also say I'm a sports girl. I'm an athlete, I'm an athlete as well. Wow. And I've been to lots of places. Academics hasn't sent me to. So, being here is a great opportunity for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Trisha. I learned you are the sports prefect of Infantiman. Put your hands together for her, Trisha. So, see me backstage. You have an award from me. Okay, so, I'd want to invite Mr. Kojo Lumo. I'm a, the CEO of Ball and Stick. The reason why we are here. So with a hand of applause, let's invite Mr. Kojo Lumo to do us the honors to present It is a beautiful day to remember we are making progress together. Look at me now. My guy is a beautiful day to remember. Hey. Hello, everyone, once again. Uh, it's a honor to have you all for highest 2022 
And I'm very glad that uh, we've all enjoyed ourselves and we've learned. Uh, it is my hope that uh, next year will be bigger. Uh, this year we had f- uh, our 17 schools. Uh, unfortunately, some had to pull out because of exams. We have Hana International School that had to pull off because of exams. Uh, Association International, uh, Thelma International, and then SOS College. Uh, unfortunately, because of uh, other activities. So, so we are hoping that next year, uh, highest 2023, uh, it will be bigger and better. And I'm very sure that we'll meet here and all of us will have a very good uh, uh, testimony to share with us that oh, after highest 2022, I got the interest and I become that, I become that, I become that. So we, we had wanted to present this to Her Excellency, uh, I, I don't know if we, we can still do it. Your Excellency, uh, I, I, I hope this looks like her. Wow. That's an artwork from Casal Soa. So, live drawing of Her Excellency, uh, Miss Cathy. I uh, want to present this to you for honoring our invitation and for your support for hockey, for the growth of hockey. We know that uh, this is just a token and we will do more if, if we have the opportunity, we'll do more. Thank you so very much for coming. Thank you so very much. Thank uh, you so, so much. Yes. Thank you so yes. much, uh, Excellency, for coming. Okay. Okay, so uh, uh, the artists want to explain a few things to us. Please. Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, actually, this is my second time doing a live drawing. It really takes a lot of time to do uh, get a realistic drawing. So doing something like this is something else. I used, uh, I added up two symbols to the drawing with the earrings. Uh, that's the symbol of uh, it's power of love. And with a necklace, that's harmony. Showing power of love and also harmony between Canada and Ghana through hockey. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Her Excellency, for honoring our invitation. Thank you so much, Kasal Soa. So you can follow him on social media at Kasoje at. Yes, that's. Kasoje Art. Thank you so much, every one of you, for having the patience to stay in here. I believe we had a wonderful time here. Highest 2022. Oh, I can't hear you. Highest 2022. And I believe I am seeing you next year, highest 2023. So I would want to invite the wife of Mr. Kojo Lumo, Mrs. Deborah Ameye, to give us the closing remarks for this wonderful and beautiful summit. Let's invite Mrs. Deborah as she gives us the closing remarks. Oh, let's give it up for her. She's right here. Wow. The wife of the CEO of Ball and Stick. Wow. Thank you very much. Um, good, um, good morning to you all. And then... I would like to thank everybody on behalf of Ball and Stake and Field Hockey Canada. I would like to thank everyone who contributed making this conference a success. We can't thank you enough, our distinguished guest of HANA. We thank you. The Belgium Ambassador, Honorable, we thank you too. The Canadian Ambassador to Ghana, Her Excellency, thank you. And then we want to thank everyone for grace grace on this occasion we have had an impactful summit we want to thank all teachers students 
representing their various schools, all the media and technical team for their immense support and making this program a success. Thank you so much and may God richly bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so much and may God richly bless you. So there is, okay, so we are going to take Okay, so I'm going to invite all the speakers upstage so that we can take a picture together with the CEO of Ball and Stick. Every one of you, every speaker that was here, I'm going to invite you. With a round of applause, let's invite them. Okay, so all the invited guests, you can join me. The Belgium consular, you can join me here as we take a group photograph with Her Excellency. One time for your skin paint. The devil always wore the skin in paint. But the blessing would have drive you insane. Who crossed the other crowd after you lay? Or should I rather find the one that is ready to do? I'm not going to get anyone to laugh. Okay, so, um, all the schools represented here can join me all the schools okay let's start with yes you can join me as this yes as we take a group photograph highest 2022 yes we are going to take it with her excellency and honorable Dimitri. so kev here yeah Oh, the representatives of this school can join us. Yes, you've done so well to bring them here. The representatives of Accra Girls. Wow, put your hands together for them. Yes. Smile. Join us. Yes. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much. Accra girls. Next, Infantiman, together with your representatives, the headmistress of Infantiman Senior High School, and all tutors. And join us as we take the group photograph. Okay, we are good. Thank you very much, Infant Man. St. Mary's, you are next. Okay. Together with all your tutors. Okay, we're good. 
Thank you so much. So next is yes, yes you, yes you. I need you. Okay, we're good. Next is Persec. 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 Legon. Followed by Legacy. Persec. Rich Church, get ready. Rich Church, you are next. Rich Church, you are next. Let's do it, Snappy. Let's do it, Snappy. Rich Church. Legacy Girls College, you are next. After Rich Church. Are we good? Okay, we're good. Legacy Girls College. Let's do it snappy. Let's do it snappy. Legacy Girls College. Followed by Christian High. Followed by Christian High. So Legacy Girls, let's do it snappy. Okay, so Christian High, Christian High, let's do it snappy. Followed by Bleo, Accra Academy. Christian High. But you know they got enough time for me. I wanna live with you. I guess it is in my can let go. Can you never just take your congrats? Man them so far to find your love. Can you never do if you come back? Oh, 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 oh. I'm 
under the sweet. I put a couple thousand dollars on your fees. I'm a, I'm a, they can't touch you, yeah. I never are we good? Okay, we are good. Accra Academy. Accra Academy, let's do it, snappy. So Dominion Christian Academy is next after Accra Academy. You can you can please rise up so that we don't delay. Let's let's prepare. Let's let's prepare. Right after Accra Academy. Dominion Christian Academy. Yeah. So, so Dominion Christian Academy, you are next. The mill washroom. The mill washroom is on the extreme left. So AIS, let's get going. AIS, let's get going. The final group picture. Yes, please. AIS. Akosombo International School. AIS. So the final group is our sponsors. Let's share go. You are next. And no, the team, the team for Hockey Youth Empowerment Summit. I would need all of you to prepare. We are going to take a picture with the Canadian embass ambassador and the consular of Belgium. So the team for Hockey Youth Empowerment Summit. Every one of you, prepare yourself. So, our proud sponsors, let's go, let's get going. Let's be snappy, please. Our proud sponsors, let's go. And then followed by the team for Hockey Youth Empowerment Summit. Every one of you from technical, media, let's get ready. All the team members of Hockey Youth Empowerment Summit. Okay, so the team members of Hockey Youth. Oh, let's, let's put our hands together for them. They've done a beautiful job. They are the reason why everything you see here, the arrangement, I'm telling you, it's not easy. It wasn't easy. Sleepless night. I was proud of them. Let's put our hands together for the team members, the technical team, every one of you. Yes. Oh, the photographer, unfortunately. Who takes the photographer a picture? That's the question.
Okay, so Eric, please join me. Eric, please join us. Please join us. You Photoshop yourself. Oh, that's illegal. Okay, so I'm told we have the final. Okay, we are done. We are done. We are done. Put your hands together for yourself. You've been the best audience. And yes, we are. We have closed Hockey Youth Empowerment Summit 2022. I want to specially thank you, every one of you. Every school represented, all the invited guests. Uh, your presence here is duly acknowledged. Her Excellency, your, 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 your presence here is duly acknowledged. Honorable, your presence here is duly acknowledged. Mr. Kojo Lumo, thank you so much for putting us together. We are so much grateful. So, students, I'm told that you shouldn't disperse because there's a package for you. There's a beautiful refreshment down there for you. So please, don't disperse. Be seated. You'll be served duly. So, that is it for Hockey Youth Empowerment Summit 2022. Put your hands together. My name is Pani Mills. So anytime you pray, remember my name. Remember you know what travel like. The name is Ray Kuda Hazala. If you find a way, then you follow up. I'll be back again from you. Ah.